All right, so looking at that student midterm presentation on the comic book process, you can see where they start with pencil sketches and then it often gets moved to another artist to ink it. So in this case, the penciler was Ernest Johnson. And then the uh, inker here is Drazio Puntara on a pencils by Max Dunbar. You know, so sometimes they're the same person inking over the pencil, sometimes it's a different person. Digital inking is the first step to digitally coloring, right? So after you have the inking, to, well, initially after you have a sketch, you know, you're, you're penciling, which can be done traditionally for this project or done on a, on a computer if you want to use a stylus and do that. I did mine traditionally. Then we're going to ink it. Then once we have clean line art, then we're going to color behind the line art. And it's a process that starts with what's called flatting. And then you just layer your, your ink lines on top. And it can get pretty complicated. So we'll go through all the variations beyond just flat color, even though it always starts with flat color. So these are some nice slides to reference that are there for you. All right, so I have posted my sketch. How do I digitally ink this sketch? Well, I'm going to open Photo, Photo P, and I'm gonna show you, and this is going to be black. So already, just with a sketch, I've set up three layers. My original sketch, an onion skin layer that's filled with white at 50%, and then a black line art layer, which is empty. Now, we're gonna pick a foreground color, and we're going to pick it to be the deepest black in the bottom left-hand corner of the color selector. And we're going to use the brush tool for really the first time in this class. Now, the brush tool in Photo P is just slightly different than the brush tool in Photoshop. Just slightly different. And what we want is a normal blend mode. And then I'm just going to use a trackpad. So I'm not using a stylus. So usually I would have it set to be pressure sensitive for size. But it doesn't matter if I don't have a stylus, right? But if you're using a stylus, click that it's pressure sensitive to size. And then we're just going to use a standard brush. You know, you use it and it just paints like that. But I'm going to pick a size that I think makes sense. And I'm going to keep the, the hardness at 100%. So that's why it's important to have your resolution set first. Because then you can pick a brush size that works. So that's close. I'm going to go a little bit smaller. So that's a better size. Okay, all of that is identical to how it's set up in Photoshop as well. The one thing that's different is this smoothness tool. And if you have 0% smoothness, it means the computer will be incredibly responsive to whatever you put down. You know, every craggy little bump will be there. But if I increase the smoothness and I try to draw the same thing, the computer will stop me and it will slow it down and smooth it out because <laughs> it's trying to make a cleaner, more even line. So that can be a really helpful tool. But you have to decide which percentage of smoothness is useful to you. So for this illustration, there are some little craggy bits, right? It's not a super smooth illustration. So I don't want it at 100%. I'm going to try it at about 70%. And then you'll probably do a lot of zooming in doing digital inking. So I'm going to click on my canvas, zoom in, make sure I'm on my black line art layer. And I can change my size of my brush anytime. But at the 70% smoothness with my trackpad, just like I would do with a brush, I'm 
I'm going to take shallow, mindful breaths. and do my inking. Just like it was ink on a piece of tracing paper. And my method, which is pretty common for digital inkers, is when you're doing a contained shape like I just did for that eye socket, you stop just short and then you connect it in a different movement. So what are the limitations of doing it this way? Well, you're stuck with one kind of technical line. It's like using a technical pen. For whatever size you chose, it's going to be that full size. But you can vary it whenever you want to. And of course, you can always layer up your inking. and thicken it out where you want to. But you're not going to get a lot of variation in line weight unless you have a tablet or unless you're always changing your size here. Because I might want to pick up some of the details on the inside here. But this is not where I draw it. This is just where I ink it, right? So just like if you are using a permanent ink pen at, in a traditional way, you don't want this to be where you're trying things out. This is your refined pass. You can use the space bar to move around while you're zoomed in. Do a little crack in the skull. And so this is one method for getting your digital line art. The most direct and available to you without any extra hardware or software. But then I'm going to show you some others because I do a lot of spot illustrations. And if I was limited to only using my trackpad and, and this program, you know, it wouldn't be as efficient as it could be. But you can see this works pretty well. I love that smooth feature. And depending on the processing speed of your computer, it can work pretty well. So I try to do kind of one continuous line. And then the computer kind of catches up with me. I try to breathe easy. Keep it pretty smooth, but the computer will help smooth out my jitteriness. And then if I get it wrong, you know, Command Z, I can try again. <laughs> it's not quite keeping up with me, so I might zoom in. Maybe I'll make it a tiny bit thicker. Then I think, no, that's too thick. So 
So this is digital inking. And because we're doing it in a high enough resolution, it's nice and clean because we're using that smoothing function on our brush. The line art can be nice and smooth. And then when I'm trying to contain shapes, I stop just short of them and then fill it in in a new pass. It gives me a little bit more control. Also to help with my digital coloring later, I'm gonna be pretty smooth in my shapes and try to always um, contain them fully. Now I can erase away from the inking too, right? So where it gets a little bumpy, where I smooth them together, I'm gonna to use my lasso. Come on. And just cut away. That's a way to keep it as smooth as possible because these are just pixels. This is still raster. And I like doing that more than using the eraser tool. And everything's at a 100% hardness. I don't want soft edges on my line art. So if I want to, even though I don't have a, a tablet that I'm using in this demo, because as we saw, even if I had a tablet, they work kind of slow with PhotoP, but you can try them for your own. But if I wanted to slim out the edges so it looked more like a brush, I can use my lasso and taper the edges just like this. All right. And then of course I can go back in and bleed the inking together, like thicken some of it in certain areas, like the bottom of these eye sockets. And this is some of the kind of use of the brush that I want you to have experience with and to master before we get into digital painting with assignment nine. Now, ideally, our line art would be a vector, and this is not producing line art that's a vector. Because we've seen how the, the free vector program works, and we've seen how the pencil tool is not super smooth or great. So I can show you, just so you have that information, what this might look like in other tools, like in Illustrator, if you were to have Illustrator or to see the advantages of it. There is a tool called the Blob Brush tool, which makes digital inking just really, really nice and leaves you with a vector image at the end of the day, which would be nice. But it's not required as long as you're at high enough resolution. And most, most illustrators, especially if you're working kind of on deadline for a given project like a comic book, and you're doing this kind of digital inking and illustrating, you're doing it at a specific resolution. You don't need it to be a vector that is able to be scaled up. Now you can even ink with more kind of refined techniques, right? So I'm mostly doing outlines, but I could even ink in some shading. So I might take some some slightly smaller brushes. I don't know, I think I wanna always have at least 10 pixels for the brush. <laughs> 